Hello everyone, my name is Renato Costa, this is Aussie Law and I'm very happy that you joined me today because in this video I am going to attempt something unique. I am going to explain the types of federalism by using chocolate, cakes and Tim Tams. So stick around until the end of this video and don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel. Are you ready for this? I sure am. If you haven't done so, I strongly encourage you to watch What is Federalism? Our previous video before watching this one. Because on that video, I kind of introduced the idea of federalism and that knowledge will be the basis for this current video. I'm using a lot of different sources for this video, but the primary one, the main source, is an article published by Professor Nicholas Aruni that is called Types of Federalism. And we will leave a link to that article in the description of this video, don't worry. Let's start. We will begin with the first typology, the differences between federation and confederation. Federations are just like chocolate tablets. Think of it. I have a chocolate tablet right here. This is a full tablet but it's composed of many parts. So, although I can see and distinguish the parts, this is still only one chocolate. Do you see what I'm getting at? Because federations are just the same thing. They are states of states. Although they are one, they are also composed of many different parts. You can see distinctively the Commonwealth and the Constitutive States. They are one, but they are also different, so you can see the parts and the one thing, the whole. Confederations, in their turn, they are sort of like a league of federations. It's an association of federations. So when federations come together, they form a confederation. I want you to picture a Kit Kat cake. This was actually pretty hard to say, because English is my second language. You can still eat parts of the Kit Kat. You can eat part of the cake. You could eat the cake with the Kit Kat, or you can choose just to eat the Kit Kats. So they are one, but you can still see how different they are. You can still pick out one specifically and choose to have it as a part of the whole of the cake, or just have it alone, like a normal Kit Kat. You see what I'm getting at? Confederations are just like that. They are part of a whole, but it's not as concise as a federation, because it is a formation of different federations. It's a group of federations. I must say, though, that this distinction is more pedagogical than factual. The reason why I say that is because of countries like Switzerland. Think of it, the name of the Swiss Federation is actually the Swiss Confederation. So the name doesn't tell everything, doesn't say everything that you need to know. But the principle remains. All in all, a federation is an, a pact between former colonies, former independent states that come together and form a union. And a confederation is a league, is an association of different federations. Let's go to the second type of federalism. This one relates to the process of formation of the federation. I've hinted in previous videos that a federation could be created either by the process of aggregation or devolution. Aggregative federations are the kinds of federations that were formed by an aggregation, a coming together from former colonies or states. It's a centripetal process, from the outside to the inside, from the scattered to the compound. Examples of aggregative federations are Australia, the United States of America and Germany. Think of aggregation as you and I trying to bake a cake. I will bring butter, sugar and flour, you will bring cocoa powder, milk, I don't actually know the rest of the ingredients because I can only make pre-mixed cakes those ones that come in the box. So when baking the cake, we are both gonna bring something of our own. We're bringing something and putting together to bake the cake. 
The resulting cake, therefore, is both mine and yours. We can share it and we both have equal claim over it because we both brought something to make it. This is basically what happens with an aggregation. Each state brings something of their own to the table and they will create something new and that new thing is the union, the federal commonwealth. Now because they make that together, they also have equal responsibilities and claims over it. Devolution is the opposite. Devolution follows a centrifugal process. Previous unitary state subdivides itself into different independent autonomous states. Belgium and Spain are kinds of federations that were formed by devolution. Devolution is more like a birthday cake. You know, you're there, you really want to receive a slice and you receive it, it's great, but maybe another person has received a better slice or a bigger slice than yours and really you don't have any means to complain because you didn't make it, the ingredients weren't yours, you just kind of received it. So there's a little bit more of a leeway towards having inequality between the states or the people or the slices of the cake. You know what I mean here? If you didn't make the cake, you cannot complain if someone else gets a better slice than you. So in the evolutions, sometimes we have bigger states or states that are not that equal and we'll get to that part in the next typology. Think with me. If a federation is being formed in a devolutionary way, that is top down from a central unitary state to subdivided entities, who do you think will have more power? The federal entity or the states? I think it's safe to say that the federal level will probably have more power than each of the states. But what if it was an aggregative formation, the federation being formed by previous colonies deciding in a bargaining and a pact and agreeing to create a union? Who do you think will have more power there? The states or the federal commonwealth? I think you would agree with me that in the case of aggregation, the probability is that the states would have more power than the federal commonwealth. And this is the idea behind the symmetrical and asymmetrical federation. Generally, countries created by aggregation tend to have a symmetrical federalism. The states are all equal. They have the same allocation of powers, the same distribution of powers, and they are treated the same. Australia falls into this category. In asymmetrical federations, on the other hand, the states will tend to have an unequal distribution of powers. The federal level may favor certain states in detriment of others, and for a number of reasons. Maybe for social equalization or economic prosperity, um, you name it. But the thing is that usually devolutionary the states are asymmetrical. They have these slight differences between each of the constituent states. Brazil, Germany and Russia are examples of countries that fall into that category. Another distinction in another typology would be the differences between uninational and multinational federations. I've said before that usually federations are a unity in diversity. This means that federations are countries that are multicultural. Many times there are differences between the states in culture, food, music, uh, whatever. They are really different, but still, in one sense, they remain the same. In places like Ethiopia, for example, they are a compound of a lot of different peoples and traditions, but they are still only one federal country. Now, multinational federalism is different because we're not talking about multiculturalism anymore, but we are referring to people, to individuals, to groups that actually see their identity distinct from the rest of the country, a distinct identity from the other people in the same federation. The two best examples of that multinational federation would be Spain and Catalonia 
and also Canada with Quebec. So we've seen the difference between federation and confederation, we've seen the differences between aggregation and devolution, between asymmetrical and symmetrical, and between multinational and uninational federations. And I've saved the best for last. The last type of federalism is about the way in which the federal system works in a country. I'm talking about coordination and cooperation. And to explain the differences between the two, I'll be using tin cans and coffee. Coordination means that federal spheres will have a distinct field of operation. Models of coordinate or dual federalism, they picture the federal state and each of the states as operating and exercising legislative, executive and judicial powers largely in autonomous ways, in different levels, in different spheres, in different fields of action. It's just like having team teams and coffee separately. They work just fine. It's delicious, but I can taste the difference. I can really see the difference of the flavor of the Tim Tam and of the coffee. They are separate. I can distinguish between the two. So in coordination, there is a dual character. You can actually distinguish between one state and the Commonwealth or between the states. It's a strict separation. It's like tasting the flavor of coffee and of Tim Tams you can distinguish the functions and the flavors in each one of them. Cooperative federalism, on the other hand, are meant for institutions to share responsibility for the determination and implementation of government policy. Cooperative or administrative federalism conceives the federation, the federal level and the states as operating in distinct functions, although in shared fields of action. So in the same area, we will be able to see the Commonwealth and the states working. So they're working together in the same field of operation. It's just like a Tim Tam Slam. In a Tim Tam Slam, you have the Tim Tam and the coffee working together. You cannot distinguish the flavor itself of each one. They're blended in, mixed. So although they are different things, they have different functions and flavors, they are operating in the same field at the same time doing things that are very similar. So just like the states and the federal commonwealth, the Tim Tam and the coffee are sharing their responsibility in producing something. In this case, this amazing flavor. I'll have one more. If my example with the Tim Tam Slam didn't work, I have another way that you can remember this distinction. Coordination is spelled with a D, and that D can mean distinction, difference. So you have distinct areas, fields of operation for the federal commonwealth and for the states. Cooperation, on the other hand, is written with a P, and that P tells you of a partnership, of a shared field of operation between the commonwealth and the states. I hope that can also help you memorize the differences between coordination and cooperation. Okay, I'll stop here because I'll have a couple more Tim Tam Slams. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like it, to subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and family and other people who need to understand a bit more about federalism and about Australian law. I hope to see you next time. Ciao!